Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired. So today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how you can quickly and easily run an Android emulator inside of a Docker container. So I'm going to pull up the Docker container that I'm going to be running today on Docker Hub, and this is available for you to search. And I will also share all the links and commands used in this video inside of the comments section. So this is free for you to pull. All you need to do is copy this command and run it wherever your Docker installation is, and you'll be able to pull this particular Docker image and run your Android emulator. Additionally, if you want to just go ahead and run the Docker container, it will automatically pull the image for you. So let's go ahead and look at the source code of this Docker image. It is available for you on GitHub, and I'll also share the link to this. So let's scroll down and see what are the different components of this Docker container that we're actually running. So this has an installation of an Android emulator inside of the Docker image. And one of the reasons I like this Docker image in particular so much is that A, it runs really quickly on my Docker installation on Windows, and B, I don't have to install any additional software to be able to actually connect to the device screen and interact with it. So all this is doing is opening up a web server on the Android uh, Docker container, and then you're able to connect to it just directly through your browser. So let's scroll down and see what we're looking at. So unfortunately for this particular container, you can only run an x86 Android emulator. So these are all the different versions that are available um, if you wanna use a particular version of Android. Right now, I'm gonna be picking this 8.1 but if you choose to use a different version, it will work just fine for you. Additionally, these are all the devices you have available as well to choose from. And I'll show you how you can change either the uh, Android version or the device that you would like to use. So let's scroll down to the command that we're going to use to run this Docker container. So if you go to the GitHub repository, you can find it right here. I'll just go kind of command by command and tell you what each one does. So of course, Docker, this is assuming you have Docker installed on your system. Run, it's running a new container. Container. This is going to be a privileged container. Dash D means it's going to be running in the background. So you're not going to see any console or terminal output when you're running this. And it will remain running in the background until you kill this container. So dash P, this 6080 port is going to be the port you're going to connect to in your web browser. And then it's also going to forward ports 5554 and 5555 because these are the standard ADB ports. So on the emulator inside of this container, they have already opened up the ADB port so that you can connect to it on your host machine. And then if you would like to, you can change this string right here to any of the devices specified up here. And you could also change to a different version of this container just by changing this image name right here. And finally, this dash dash name flag right here is giving your Android container a, namer, a name. So when you run Docker PS or Docker container LS, you're going to see that name pop up. So let's just go ahead and copy this command and run it and connect to our emulator. So I already have my terminal open and I'm just going to control V, paste that in. So for you, if you're pulling this image for the first time, it's going to do some downloading and loading. This is basically just downloading and extracting all the different Docker image layers. But I already have this on my machine, as you can see right here. If I run Docker image LS, so I can just go ahead and run this. So now it doesn't look like anything's happened but actually my Android container is up and running in the background. I can verify this by going docker ps and I can see there's my Android container running right here. So if you have ADB installed, you can already go ahead and do ADB devices. And it looks like it didn't attach here yet, but that's okay because all we need to do is go ADB connect and then this is running on localhost. 
to connect to the ADB server running on the emulator. So now we can do ADB devices. And there you have your device attached. So now I can pretty much do whatever I want. I can go ahead and I'm just going to show you an example of installing an APK on this device just to show you that it works. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to go ahead and open up the web server and connect to the interface of my device. So all I need to do is I need to open up a new tab in my browser. And I'm going to connect to localhost or 127.0.0.1. And then if you remember that port over here that we were forwarding, 6080, that's what I'm going to connect to. So I already have connected to this, so I'm going to go colon. 6080 to connect to that port and here I have my screen I'm just gonna click there we show and okay and it looks like my Galaxy S6 emulator is all booted and I should be able to interact with it so I'm click here and I can see all of my apps and everything so it looks pretty good sometimes it's a little bit laggy but <laughs> it's it works pretty well there we go. You have to make sure it completely boots first or else you can experience some delay. So if it's really, really laggy, just go ahead and give it like 60 more seconds and it should be fine afterwards. So now we can see that we can go ahead and interact with our emulator. I'm just going to install an example application on here. So I picked just the normal version of Twitter. And you can find this on APK Pure, and I'll share a link to this in the comments. And you can go ahead and hit download on this APK, and it should give you a .apk file of Twitter. So I have already downloaded this APK, and I have it right here. So I'm going to change to this directory and go ahead and install it on my emulator. So here we have, this is the name of our APK. And first of all, I'm going to show you one thing, a way to check and see if an application is installed on the device. I'll show you before and after I install this APK. So I have, I have my device running. I can go ADB shell to actually get a shell to the running device. And I'm going to do package manager list package. This is going to show you all of the different packages that are by default installed on this emulator. So if I want to filter, can you package manager list package pipe grep? See if we have Twitter. We do not have Twitter. So if you're curious, uh, this is really just the Linux terminal running underneath. So Android is just a special flavor of the Linux kernel. So all your regular Linux commands, or at least most of them are going to work just fine running them on your Android em emulator. So I'm going to exit out of there. And now let's go ahead and install our APK. So I'm going to do ADB install, and then the name of my APK. And it's just installing Twitter to our emulator. So I'll give this a minute for this to fully install. All right, so now our APK is fully installed on the emulator. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to verify inside of the actual device interface. You can just go over here and see all of our apps, just like you would on any Android device. And you can see Twitter is right here. So now we have that app that we can interact with. If you also want to verify it within the command line, we're just going to get another shell to the device and verify through the Android package manager that it's installed. So I'm just going to do ADB shell and we're connected to our device again. And then package manager list package pipe grep Twitter. And there we go we can see that we now have Twitter installed on this device. So now that we've been able to connect to our device, install a package and verify that the package is installed, let's just go ahead and show how we can remove the Docker container once we're done testing. So I have a shell to my device, so I'm gonna exit out of that shell. 
And now if I now if I run docker ps or alternatively you could run docker in docker container ls, you can see that this is still running in the background. Um, so all I need to do is do docker container rm dash f. The dash f just means force because the docker container is still running. So it's going to force it to uh, kill and remove the container at once. If you don't add the dash f flag and your container is still running, then it will complain and it won't actually can kill the container. Then I'm going to type android dash container. You can use this name, this full name right here, or you can copy this and paste this. So now you can see if we run docker ps or even docker ps dash all, then we have no containers running anymore. So we have successfully killed this Android emulator. So one thing that's nice if you're using Docker containers to host your Android emulators is you saw how I could kill and remove the Docker container and I could simply run that same command that I ran in the beginning to run the Docker container and it would be exactly the same state that it was. So it won't have your any of your APKs that you've already installed on the device. So thanks so much everyone for watching Lori Wired. Today you learned how you could easily run an Android emulator inside of a Docker container. And you can use the same commands on Windows, Linux, Mac, anything. It's going to be the same as long as you have Docker installed and you're able to use the Docker keyword. Additionally, we showed how to connect to a device using ADB. And then also we touched on how to install an APK onto your emulator and verify that the APK was indeed installed. So thanks everyone. Okay. Jeez.